friends, I'm Akash, and this is your News of the Week for the week of November 21st to November 27th, 2021. I'm Akash and Cody, let's get right into the headlines. We begin with Thanksgiving Day being on November 25th, so Happy Thanksgiving everyone! I'm going to talk more about Thanksgiving in a moment, but we'll take a look at some of the other stories before we jump into further details. For example, the brand new variant of COVID-19 named Omicron that is rapidly spreading in Southern Africa. Travel bans have been placed on seven countries in this area by America, Britain, and other European countries. As of now, it hasn't reached the rest of the world just yet, and we don't know much about it, but scientists say that it very well could be very contagious. And we might even see a leap in virus evolution. And so this could be potentially very dangerous, but we don't know much just yet. And that is something that we are going to have to figure out in a while. These are all preliminary reports as this story just broke out like a couple of days ago. And we're going to take a look at more information in a moment. But first, Sweden's first female prime minister, Magdalena Andersson, was elected on November 24th by Swedish parliament, the Riksdag. However, she was only to resign a couple of hours later because of a major budget bill that failed to pass into law. So... This seems to be a very awkward thing, how someone can progress from first female elected prime minister of Sweden right the way to resigning because of a failed budget bill. Now, I'm going to talk more about why this is the case um, in further details later on in this News of the Week. But first, we'll take a look at our last story of the week, which is NASA's DART, Double Asteroid Redirection Test which is NASA's first attempt at deflecting an asteroid away from Earth. So, if this mission is successful, and this mission is meant to last until September of 2022, then, guess what that means? This means that if any asteroid comes on a collision course headed straight for Earth, like Armageddon, well, good thing, we can just fire off the dirt and push it off. And although it isn't going to be exactly like Armageddon with all the exploding of the asteroid and whatnot, um, in this case it's just going to be um, crashing a impactor into an asteroid to send it off. This is the plan for DART, and if it works, then that is going to be a really, really big change, and that's going to be awesome. So, this is um, your news of the week, so let's get into the further details. We begin with... Thanksgiving Day, which was on November 25th, 2021. So, Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Now, um, given that Thanksgiving Day is the day to remember and thank the many, many people who made us who we are, I wanted to thank the many people who made me who I am. So, I've made a video, which you can watch right here, about all the people who I am associated with that have shaped me into who I am today. So thank you, thank you all so, so, so much. Now, speaking of Thanksgiving Day, I want to know what you did for Thanksgiving. So like, you know, with the Thanksgiving dinner and all that, you know, what did you do? So make sure to comment right down below on what you did for Thanksgiving Day. Now, with that in mind, we'll take a look at our next topic of the week, which is the brand new variant of COVID-19 spreading around rapidly in Southern Africa. This is the Omicron variant, named after the 15th letter of the Greek alphabet, that is Omicron. Now, Omicron, um, we don't know much about it right now, but it is rapidly spreading, um, and as of a couple days, we know it has been transported over to seven countries in Southern Africa, and these are Botswana, South Africa, Mozambique, Malawi, Eswatini, Lesotho, and Zimbabwe. These are the seven countries over in Africa which have had at least one case of Omicron. Now, um, it seems that scientists in South Africa are examining it right now, and they've said that this could have potentially
really been a major leap in evolution compared to the other ones, uh, the other variants that we've seen, like Delta or Lambda. And that with this new variant of COVID-19, well, anything can happen. And maybe, well, things may not go so well once it reaches other parts of the world. Hence the reason why there was a mission so that um, starting Monday, um, all travel from South Africa to America will not take place at all. Of course, this is barring, you know, American citizens and people living in America who are traveling to South Africa for anything they need. But, officially, you shouldn't have to go to South Africa during this time, unless you really need to. And for the South African citizens, they can't go over to America, and that is a done deal. And the same situation goes for South Africans trying to visit Britain, or to several other European countries. So, the travel bans, these temporary COVID-19 travel bans were placed upon South Africa, and the rest of these seven countries where Omicron is hit. And so, Omicron has been going about in these regions. Now, um, Chief Medical Advisor to the President, Dr. Anthony Fauci, has indeed said that um, we need to be very cautious about this, as there is not much we know yet about Omicron. And, of course, we've got our scientists, you know, examining Omicron and seeing what is going on, and if, um, and just how safe or how dangerous it really is, and, or it really can be. And so, this means that while this whole operation is going on, we need to put on these travel bans for the time being as a result of COVID-19 that is going on right now. So, um, we figured that was very important to remain cautious during this time, so America installed this traffic, sorry, the travel ban that is going to be taking place, um, uh, installing starting Monday. So, that is what is going to be going on with the Omicron variant. Um, of course, this is all just preliminary information. We haven't had any new cases appear in America or Britain or pretty much most of the rest of the world. But this is just been a few days and anything can happen. So let's take a look at our next story of the week. That is Sweden's first ever female prime minister, Magdalena Andersson was officially elected to be Prime Minister of Sweden by the Riksdag, the Swedish Parliament, on November 24th, 2021. This would be groundbreaking. It'd be the last Nordic state to have a female Prime Minister, and this would be record-breaking. But, that is, if it weren't for a couple hours later when a major budget bill failed to pass, the opposition budget bill passed instead, and as a result, Anderson was forced to resign from office. Now, how did this go from being elected as the first female prime minister of Sweden to resigning from that position a couple of hours later? Now, this whole very uh, limited span is very interesting, and I'll talk about why. Because um, the for this while, there was the major political party in Sweden. Um, or the ruling one for a couple of years has always been the Social Democratic Party, and Anderson was representing the Social Democrats. Now, as the uh, Social Democrats had been ruling for quite a while in Sweden, um, it was assumed that she was probably going to win the um, vote by the Riksdag in uh, on November 24th. And although she didn't receive a majority of yeses there were enough abstain votes so that out of the remaining, the yes were the majority, and so the vote took place and Anderson became the Prime Minister. Of course, she was actually going to be Prime Minister on the 26th, but that same day there was a major budget bill that was passing through law. Um, there were two of them. One of them was the Social Democrats one, and the other one was the opposition Swedish Democrats bill. So, the Social Democrats, who actually created this in a coalition agreement with the Green Party of Sweden, these two parties, Social Democrats and Greens, combined their forces and made a coalition. So that was what's going to be ruling the country. So they went for the budget bill and it was promptly defeated in the Reichstag, the opposition Swedish Democratic bill 
pass straight through and the opposition right wing deal made it in. So the budget bill has failed disastrously and, the, and now it's the goal of the opposition to run the budget and um, to do things with that. And well, I mean, this was with the Swedish Democrats who the Green Party um, probably absolutely hates because they are the opposite party and well, the Greens and the Swedish Democrats do not go along very well. So, um, the Greens realizing what go on um, that even if the Greens were going with a partnership with the Social Democratic Party and that they were still going to be going, um, they were still all going to be going under the opposition budget bill, not what they were planning for in the slightest, so eventually they go for the full out tactic of literally leaving the coalition. And although this may not sound too big, it kind of is, and for more reasons than one. Obviously, this means the Social Democrats don't have a majority anymore. Um, but as a result of the Green Party going, we refuse to serve in the government under the rule of the opposition budget bill. We are leaving the coalition. That is it. As a result of doing that, there is a sort of tradition in Swedish parliament, in Swedish politics, that is, if a party in your coalition, in your ruling coalition, leaves the coalition, then you automatically have to resign. So this, as a result of this long-standing tradition, this meant that, if anything, Anderson only had one choice. I mean, after all, the coalition has failed, she, the, uh, she and her party is now in the minority, and there is literally no other choice but to do that. So, that is what she did. She ended up resigning from office, and so, so went the tenure of, well, what is A going to be, or was going to be, the first female Prime Minister of Sweden, and also the shortest lasting Prime Minister of Sweden. Now, of course, this is a very interesting thing that has gone on in Sweden, but there is some interesting news. There is going to be re-elections, well, obviously there would be, scheduled for November 29th, and Magdalena Andersson has actually said that she's planning to run again, this time as a, um, this time without the help of the Greens, as just a Social Democrats, um, single party government. So, this party government um, is actually planned to most likely win. So there's a good chance that it should probably win on November 29th when the new vote is going to take place. So if that's the case, then she will actually break the record for the first female ever Prime Minister of Sweden and also having been the shortest lasting Prime Minister of Sweden. That is what's going on with Swedish politics. So, now this is what's been going on in Sweden, so we're gonna take a look at the next one, which is going to be talking about NASA's brand new DART, Double Asteroid Redirection Test. And so DART is going to be NASA's first try at an Armageddon-style asteroid deflection test. Now, I mean, it isn't exactly like Armageddon with, you know, like, driving in and, like, exploding the whole thing. No, that's, that's, it is, the Armageddon is quite the Hollywood spectacle, but, um, Dart is planning to take that a little bit more realistically. And hopefully, if this asteroid deflection test works, that means if any asteroid around the size of the one we're targeting, named Dimorphos, if any asteroid around that size comes along on the straight crash course collision course for Earth, well, then we just fire a dart and, well, it probably work and we'd probably be safe from it. So, of course, um, it's going to take a while before, you know, the actual stuff comes out, but this is going to be the plan. Now, this whole mission is going to last roughly 10, 11 months. And it's going to last from just now, when it launched, to all the way until September of 2022. So, DART comprises two different parts. One of them is the DART impactor, which is just one whole bit like that. 
that is just headed on a collision course for Dimorphos. So Dimorphos being the asteroid that we are targeting right now, which is a near-Earth asteroid. So although Dimorphos doesn't pose like much harm to Earth very soon, um, we're just using it as a test to see if the system will work. So the Dart Impactor is going to crash right into Dimorphos, and we're going to see if it makes any change to wherever Dimorphos goes. And so with that, we also have the second component of Dart, and that is Lycia Cube. Now, Lycia Cube is actually the light Italian cube sat for imaging of asteroids. And this is a specific CubeSat satellite. A CubeSat is a satellite meant for space travel that is, well, shaped like a cube. So this CubeSat um, has been built by the Italian Space Agency, ASI, specifically for the purpose of assisting with DART. So this is kind of a NASA-ASI collaborative project. So NASA and ASI collaborated for Lycia Cube, and so DART and Lycia Cube are going to travel together. Lycia Cube is going to detach from uh, the DART impactor roughly 10 days before launch, uh, or by launch I mean impact, and the reasoning for this so is so that Lycia Cube can um, take a picture and sort of analyze what is going on and to figure out um, what is happening within the place and to pretty much analyze the event that is happening where the dart impactor collides with Dimorphos. So then we're going to see that Lycia Cube is the bit that is actually going to be you know, transporting all the information to Earth. Lycia Cube will not be colliding with Dimorphos, at least not anytime soon. Um, but the DART impactor will. Lycia Cube will capture that information, send it to Earth, and now we are going to take a look at, you know, the more detailed analysis of what's gone on. And um, this, of course, is going to be just a partial examination. The further, the full, full examination, like, year-long, years-long, um, uh, a five-year term, sort of, will take place. This is how long the whole, whole project will last. In September 2022, that is when the collision will take place. In 2024, ESA, the European Space Agency, will launch HERA, which is the follow-up mission to DART. And so, HERA is going to launch, and over the course of three years, all the way till 2027, five years to the year of the DART collision, um, ESA and HERA is going to figure out what has happened to Dimorphos and overall if the project was a success. So this project is going to take a long time, but then again, that is how long a lot of these types of projects will last. And so this whole project is going to be very, very interesting. And if this works, we might have a, a sort of Armageddon in real life scenario. Um, and that's going to be very interesting. The bit at the end where they go in and they explode the asteroid. Yeah, okay. We're not going to explode the asteroid, obviously. But what we are going to do instead is crash into it so it deflects away from Earth. And then that means that we can save Earth that way, which is wonderful and is exactly what we need. So I really hope DART works because if that's the case, then that means that we can save Earth whenever we want. Just use DART and we're fine and we're safe and that is going to be great. So that is what's going on with DART and that is all of your news of the week. For the week of November 21st to November 27, 2021, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you soon in another news of the week. Goodbye.